it's Jane and welcome back to Mystery Monday. Okay, two weeks ago I did my awards special and I started by saying that there weren't actually any mystery awards announced. I was just doing an overview. But you know what? I was totally lying <laughs> because after I finished filming, I just, because I'm like this, I just did keep doing a bit more searching, I found there actually had been a Mystery Awards ceremony where a set of Mystery Awards were announced the weekend before I made that video. This is the uh, Lefty Awards, which is uh, given out by the Left Coast Crime Convention, a fan convention uh, that's run and organised by mystery fans in the West Coast of the United States of America. It's not maybe a top tier award, but their award system is quite different from most of the others I talked about and the kind of books that they award are quite different. And so I thought it was worth looking at these to expand our range. So the two awards that I'm going to talk about are the namesake Lefty Award and the Lefty Award is given for the best humorous mystery. All of the nominees are pretty much cosies, uh, like as in absolute by definition cosies with punny titles and female uh, protagonists and romantic subplots, as I described, except for one, uh, which is humorous but not maybe a strict, strict, strict cosy. Uh, the second award that we're going to look at is their um, historical mystery award. And again, they skew towards the cosy end of the spectrum. So as I said, this is a bit different from most of the other awards that I covered. So let's have a look at who they nominated. The nominees for the 2015 Lefty Award for Best Humorous Mystery included The Good, The Bad and The Emus by Donna Andrews. This is uh, number 17 in the Meg Langslow series. Uh, that's right, number 17. And in fact, number 18's already been published and number 19 has cover art released. So this series is not slowing down anytime soon. Um, Meg Langslow is a successful decorative blacksmith and an exceptional amateur sleuth. These books are set in Virginia in the United States and all of the titles have some sort of bird in them. Uh, the Good, the Bad and the Emus concerns long-time family secrets and a family drama that stretches over many generations in Meg's family and some feral emus. Of course. Uh, another nominee for this award was January Thor by Jess Lowry. This is number nine in the Murder by the Month series. And the, the protagonist of these books is Mira James, who is an assistant librarian, part-time reporter, and um, by this stage in the series, a freelance investigator for the local attorney in Battle Lakes, Minnesota. The mystery in January Thor concerns the discovery of a frozen corpse in the ice on a lake out the front of a grand mansion that's in the middle of its reopening ceremony. A third nominee for this award is Dying for a Dude by Cindy Sample. This is number four in the Laurel McKay Mysteries series. Laurel is a recently divorced soccer mum, sorry, soccer mom. You know, I don't know what you guys think this sounds like, but to Australians, that word M-O-M just sounds hilarious. Anyway, moving on. Um, she's a recently diverse soccer mom working at Hangtown Bank in the gold country town Placerville, California. Dying for a Dude follows the discovery of two dead bodies, one a 150-year-old skeleton uh, the discovery of which implicates one of Laurel's ancestors in a murder. And the second dead body is that of a present-day prominent citizen, which implicates her ex-husband. Oh, no! A fourth nominee for the lefty this year was Swayed to Rest by Diane Valere. And this is number one in the A Material Witness mystery series. The Material Witness series follows Polyester Monroe, Polly to her friends, who is a failed dress designer who has just inherited her family's long shuttered up 
textile store called Land of a Thousand Fabrics. Polly is looking forward to a fresh start, but not everybody in town is, is happy to welcome her back. And then a body turns up just behind the shop. And the book, as is described in capital letters on their Goodreads page, includes a craft project. So that means you know you're getting a first class cozy. The winner for the 2015 uh, Lefty Award, drum roll please, thank you, is Herbie's Game by Timothy Hallinan, which is number four in the Junior Bender series. Junior Bender is a high-end burglar who reluctantly moonlights as an investigator, a private eye for crooks in Los Angeles. In this particular story, Bender has been approached by Waddles, an executive crook, whose private office has been burgled and his written arrangements for a hit job have been stolen. So um, that was the winner of this year's Lefties. The second award... Um, that comes up at the Le at the Left Coast Crime Convention that I'm going to talk about is the Bruce Alexander Memorial Mystery Award for Best Historical Mystery. And their definition of historical mystery means that it must cover events prior to 1960. The nominees for 2015 included Queen of Hearts by Rhys Bowen, which is number eight in the Her Royal Spiness series. Uh, these books uh, follow Lady Georgina Rannick, who is a cousin to King George V of England and 35th in the line for the British throne. Lady Georgie is penniless and trying to make her way as an, um, a quote-unquote ordinary person in the 1930s London. Um, all these books are told in the first person, so narrated by Lady Georgie. Queen of Hearts follows Georgie on a cross-Atlantic trip for her much-married mother to contract a quick divorce in Reno. And it includes the investigation of a suspected jewel thief and a side trip to Hollywood thrown into the mix. The second nominee for the Bruce Alexander Memorial Mystery Award this year was From the Charred Remains by Susanna Colkins, which is the second in the Lucy Campion mystery series. Lucy is a lady's maid um, in 1666 London, just after the Great Fire has decimated the already plague-ridden city. In From the Charred Remains, local cleanup efforts uncover the corpse of a man who died neither by fire nor plague, but with a knife thrust through his chest. The third nominee um, this year is for City of Ghosts by Kelly Stanley, which is number three in the Miranda Corby mystery series. Miranda Corby is a private eye, an actual licensed private eye, a, a Spanish Civil War nurse and an ex-escort in 1940s San Francisco. In City of Ghosts, with war on the horizon, Miranda is employed to investigate a chemistry professor suspected of being a Nazi spy and soon finds herself framed for a murder. The fourth nominee for the Bruce Alexander Memorial Mystery Award this year is Cup of Blood by Jerry Westerton, which is number seven in the Crispin Guest Medieval Noir series. Crispin Guest is a disgraced knight in 14th century London, and when a corpse turns up his favourite tavern, Crispin begins an inquiry, but the dead man turns out to be a... Da da da, Knight Templar, an order which is thought to be extinct for 75 years. Before he can investigate, Crispin is abducted by shadowy men who are said to be minions of the French anti pope. That is, that is a premise that I could get behind. Okay, but the winner, the winner of this year's uh, Bruce Alexander Memorial Mystery Award for Best Historical Mystery goes to A Deadly Measure of Brimstone by Catriona McPherson. This is number eight in the Dandy Gilver Mystery Series. Dandy Gilver is a well-to-do woman in 1920s Scotland. Uh, she's married with two sons and uh, also has a bit of a love interest on the side. So that's Dandy Gilver. Dandy's family are laid low with various ills, so she takes them all to the borders town of Moffat and the splendid laid low hydropathic hotel, there to drink the sulfurous waters straight from the well. 
and, coincidentally, to investigate the mysterious death at the hydro of a stout elderly lady from Edinburgh. Okay, I've not read any of these books before, and um, in fact, only one or two of the series are familiar to me, um, but a number of them sound like crackers. I would be so interested to hear what people think. Which one of these do you think sounds the most interesting? That's it for me for Mystery Monday. I'll hope you're all well, and I'll talk to you later. Bye!